All right, getting ready to go green, and Cole, and the uh, lineup is going to be Jeremy Edwards and Patrick Gitter on the front row, Nate Johnson and Jeremy Gardner on the second row, Otto Cruz, Kenny Hyde on the third row, Dean Webb, Brandon Newby on the fourth row, Chris Lockwood and Justin Swaffer rounding out the top ten, then Kevin Bernheimer and Blair Patterson, 11th and 12th. 13th is Anthony Karen, Bryant DeYoung is 14th, PJ Cox 15th, Patrick Piper is 16th, Blake Vicken 17th, Jeffrey Sheldon 18th, 19th is James Smith, and 20th is Joe Ogle. Russell Worth is 21st with Jarrett Woodward, Woodard in 22nd, Pudge back in 23rd, Bradley Hunt in 24th, 25th is Ryan McDaniel, Nicholas Burke in 26th, 27th is Jason Miz, 28th is Greg Gates, 29th is Eric Ziegel, and 30th is Bradley Wright. A full field here tonight for a three-quarter mile track. This ought to get really, really good. As I mentioned in the practice race last night, uh, guys were able to lean on each other quite a bit. Now, we did mention the uh, the car is a little bit loose on the start when you're trying to get the uh, tire temps up, so things will get exciting early on, but things will settle in eventually. And it'll get uh, a bit wild. Coming in tonight, only uh, two races in the book so far. Nate Johnson won at Daytona. Patrick Gitter won at The Rock last week. A couple of very exciting races there. Uh, Daytona, obviously a rough race for a lot of guys. So some of these guys really starting to make a comeback. The points, obviously, just two races in, extremely tight. With four people currently tied for fourth, two tied for ninth. So, uh, like I said, points extremely, extremely close. Don't forget to drop in the comments. Let us know who you're cheering for here tonight or just say hello. Quick look at the track, three quarters of a mile track, 71 degree track temperature, 14 degrees of banking in, in the turns, four, eight degrees of banking on the uh, front straightaway, two degrees on the back straightaway, and as we'll show you here in a few minutes, when you're going through turns one and two, you're actually going downhill. When you're going through turns three and four, you're actually going uphill. Just a little bit, but it does tend to throw the cars off just a little bit. Brenda Montgomery cheering on Russell Worth. And the pace car is in. Barney the flag man gets ready. Green flag is in the air. They're down and away from Richmond. And everybody's staying too wide. Some guys trying different lanes, but uh, caution. Let's see what happened. Looks like Patrick Piper involved. Oh, big pile up. Let's see if we can get a better angle on that one. And, oh, looks like uh, one of the cars, the 23, I believe, just pushed up in the turn. No, I believe we'll have to take another look at this. The 22 there, the Miller Genuine Draft Truck, he pushes up and a big group of cars hit the wall. And 
And there you have it. A big pile up. A lot of trucks tore up. It looks like Jeffrey Ogle had to tow to pit road. A lot, pretty much all the drivers hitting pit road this time. Kristen Edwards cheering on Jeremy, who happens to be currently in the lead. Patrick Gitter still in second. No big moves. One or two spots. A few guys managed to navigate through the chaos. Russell Worth picking up six or five spots up to 16th. Pudge picking up six spots up to 17th. Ryan McDaniel has picked up seven spots up to 18th. Bradley Hunt has come from 24th to 19th. And Jason Miz comes from 27th to 20th. And we are testing out some new cameras here tonight, so let us know what you think. We got uh, working with track cams for Gourmets. The website is in the comments for them, and absolutely loving some of these new cameras. Got to try a few out at Bristol, getting to try some out at Richmond. Looking forward to next week when we can try some out at the bigger tracks. All right, lights are out on the pace car. Everybody's starting to stack back up. A lot of damaged cars. Uh, J Joe Ogle still on pit road. Everybody likely to be a lot more patient on the restart here. Pace car is in. Out of turn three, green flag back in the air. Looking further back through the field. Worth noting that they are not using iRacing cautions. The admins are controlling the race, so a single car spin will not end, uh, bring out a caution. It has to be a multi-car verified very quickly by a lot of cautions out. And looks like Patrick Piper might have been involved again. Oh, we've got a spin and a stack up out of turn four. Jeremy Edwards still has the lead. Richmond has a tendency to lean towards a couple of early, two or three early cautions then some long green flag racing. Last night we went over 50 laps on without a caution. Expect once these guys get going to uh, have a lot of green flag runs and then lap traffic will become an issue. Now, as mentioned, the setup felt a little bit different last night. Uh, loose off two, which is kind of unusual, and a little bit better off of turn four. But as you heard mentioned uh, in pre-race, a couple of these guys, in, very noticeable. Once that car starts to change after about 20 to 25 laps, the car gets really, really tight, just really wants to hit the outside wall. And we've got one driver coming around, I believe. That is Jeffrey Sheldon, who was involved in that first big incident. His truck is repaired. He is getting back on the lead lap, so we'll end up with 28 cars back out on the lead lap. As the lights go out on the pace car, no change in the top 10.
And look at all those beautiful retro paint schemes. Although I did tell PJ Cox he needed to change that camel paint scheme. <laughs> just because it makes me want one. All right, pace car is back in. Green flag is in the air. They're down and away again here at Richmond and a big jump. Jeremy Edwards gets a good run off into turn one. Everybody clears one and two this time. No problems back up front. Jeremy Edwards continues to lead, but there's a battle going on, and there's cars making their way forward very, very quickly. Fifty-eight of Kenny Hyde Jr. is looking really, really racy. He has been trying different lines look for him to start moving for now he is looking to the inside for fifth last time my auto cruise was the fastest Jeremy Edwards has opened up a small gap. Nobody's been able to really close back up on him, but Patrick Gitter, last week's winner, is staying within sight of him. Otto Cruz also right there with him. Nate Johnson in fourth, Kenny Hyde Jr. in fifth, Jeremy Gardner in sixth, Dean Webb in seventh, Chris Lockwood eighth, Swafford up to ninth, and Brandon Newby in tenth. Just outside the top 10 is Blair Patterson in 11th, Kevin Bernheimer in 12th, Anthony Karen in 13th, PJ Cox in 14th. I'm looking to see the biggest mover so far, Ryan McDaniel started in 25th. He is up to 17th. And he called his shot earlier tonight, said he is going to win here. Jason Miz, who started in 27th, is up to 19th. Eric Ziegel, who started in 29th, up to 20th. Got some guys with great wreck avoidance and some fast trucks starting to make their way toward the front. But Jeremy Edwards, finally, uh, he's got about a half a second lead, pulling away just a little bit. He was half a tenth a second faster than Patrick Gitter the last two laps. Robbie Lou cheering on the 28. Bryant DeYoung currently running in 16th place. Oh, a little close with PJ Cox there off of turn four. Tires should be getting good and warm now. Also means we'll probably start to see some guys really struggling. Now, we were talking uh, last night about their brake biases. You can use the brake bias to help. Uh, you have to get on the brakes to make the turns here. But the further back your brakes bias is, the more rear brake you have in the car, the more it will rotate, and you can get that better run off. But there is a fine line between better rotation and rotating the truck all the way around. There were a few guys, most of us were running around 55, 56% rear bias. There were some guys down in the low 40s. Also causes a problem when you have to lock them up to avoid another one is Kenny Hyde Jr. Jeremy Gardner keeps looking under Kenny Hyde Jr. trying to take that fifth place. And a good side-by-side -side battle here, as we saw last night. Uh, these side-by-side -side battles can last several laps, especially if you're trying to pass to the inside. It takes a while to make to complete the pass once you get the nose in there.
And Pudge is starting to make his way forward. He's up nine spots now. Started in uh, 23rd. He's up to 14th. Brian DeYoung has picked up a spot from P.J. Cox. He is now up to 15th and making his way forward. Eric Ziegel really on the move tonight. In the 55, he is already up 11 spots to 18th. He avoided several uh, er, incidents and wrecked trucks on those cautions, but uh, has started picking up spots on his own ever since. Meanwhile, Jeremy Edwards continuing to lead and slowly but surely opening up a bit of a gap. Now, seven-tenths of a second over Patrick Gitter. But don't count Gitter out yet. Last week at the Rock, tire saving is what saved him and put him in victory lane. This track, you really have to be careful and save the caution. Blair Patterson involved. Off into turn one in the uh, Mopar Tro. The 76 got a push in the middle of the turn, and they were right in front. Oh, PJ Cox might have caught a piece of that. Now, expect to see a lot of cars hit pit road this time. Hey, good evening, Richie. That might be a, I wouldn't, I don't know about that, Richie. But thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. All right, it does look like the entire field is, I stand corrected, the entire field is not on pay road. Eric Ziegel stayed out. Patrick Piper stays out. They are going to bet on track position. And they'll bank an extra set of tires for later in the race while everybody else grabs a set now. Let's see if we can get a word with Eric. Hey, Eric, this is Doug in the booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you loud and clear. Hey, man, uh, you stayed out. I know you guys have only been out. You've been out there for less than 30 laps, but I know uh, from last night those tires have got to not be feeling their best right now. No, they're definitely not the best. I mean, with a limited set of tires, it's kind of tough to be pitting this early. I want to try to save them more towards the end. So I'm going to gamble here and see what happens. Or you can learn something later for a race. Well, at least this way uh, you've got the track position, which seems to be pretty important here tonight with uh, passing opportunities pretty limited. Yeah, it's definitely tough. I mean, I was back in the pack early there. It's definitely tough to be passing back there. All right, man. Well, you were making your way through the field. You would picked up 11 spots on your own. Now you've got the lead, and let's see what you can do with it. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. All right, Eric Ziegel staying out, as did Patrick Piper. Patrick had been to pit road earlier, but only for repairs. He did not change tires. Kenny Hyde Jr. stays out. Bradley Wright stays out. And I do believe everybody, yes, everybody else went to pit road. 26 cars still on the lead lap as James Smith comes off pit road. Make that... Uh, looks like Greg Gates is going to be scored tail into the lead lap. We'll have to wait when scoring updates to see for sure. He's either the first car one lap down or at the tail end of the lead lap. I think he might be the first car one lap down. James Smith does get back to the lead lap. So as I mentioned, 26 cars on the lead lap. 26 guys. Everybody's still in it really this early in the race. Lights are out on the pace car. As the Superflow Chevrolet from Days of Thunder is in the lead. <laughs> 
Shannon Edwards telling Brian DeYoung to get going. If we get a chance to talk to him, I'll make sure to relay that. <laughs> All right, pace car is in. Green flag is in the air. They are down and away, and Eric gets a good jump into turn one. And it looks like at a few places that some of these guys were trying to shoot up the middle. Nobody pulls it, though. Out of turn two, there's a car stopped on the apron. He was coming off of pit road. It looks like that was Bradley Wright. Jeremy Edwards, who had led the first part of the race before that caution. Caution! And Justin Swafford involved. Oh, Swafford gets loose right in front of the whole pack. Collects several trucks. A hard hit there. Looks like uh, Greg Gates might have been caught in the aftermath as well. No, I'm not sure what happened with Greg. He just kind of disappeared. He might be having uh, connection difficulties. All right, Brian DeYoung is currently running in 14th. Let's, uh, as some cars come to pit road, He'll actually pick up a few tra uh, spots on track right now. Hey, Bryant, this is Doug. You got me? Yeah, got you, buddy. Hey, man, uh, looking pretty tough to pass out there tonight. Really, really slick out here, man. It's getting, uh, it's getting hairy, that's for sure. <laughs> a lot of guys sliding around, a lot of incidents, especially off turn two. But I really brought you in because I'm supposed to relay a message from Shannon to uh, get going. <laughs> That's my boss, man. <laughs> <laughs> I understand completely. Well, you better do what she says. <laughs> no, no, him. That's that, that. That's a guy. His big, big man. Big. big oh, man. my bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, sorry, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, man. I'm just back here taking my time trying to let all this stuff cycle out. Well, it looks like you've been pretty lucky so far. Managed to stay out of trouble. Hope you can keep that truck clean. I appreciate it, buddy. Sorry, Shannon. All right, Eric Ziegel did not pit on that last restart. It definitely has benefited him. He has managed to hold on to the lead so far. Lights are out on the pace car. It looks like we might go single file for this restart due to the uh, number of repeat cautions. That's going to stretch the field way, way out. As the pace car drops in, Eric controls the restart. Green flag is in the air. They're down and away. Kenny Hyde Jr. actually looking to the high side already. Eric shuts the door on that, and it allows Patrick Gitter to look low. Nothing there yet, but they, these guys up front, they are looking for positions here. And Patrick Gitter to the bottom for second place. As it looks like Kenny Hyde drifted up the track just a little bit. Kenny Hyde, one of the drivers on older tires. Patrick Gitter is on fresh green. Uh, caution is out. Brandon Newby involved. And, yep, there it is. He snap loose off a of turn four. He manages to save it and keep it going, but the caution was already out. And it looks like Eric Ziegel and Kenny Hyde Jr.'s strategy might actually pay off. They got track position. Patrick Gitter is the only driver on fresh tires up there in the top three. Jeremy Edwards currently in fourth, and it looks like Eric's going to come to pick. No, he fakes. <laughs> 
Eric Siegel fakes to pit road. Nobody falls for it. <laughs> All right, so Eric Siegel up from 29th to 1st. Kenny Hyde, uh, Patrick Gitter in 2nd. That's where he started. Kenny Hyde in 3rd, up from 6th. Uh, Patrick Piper, who was involved in an earlier incident, has made his way back up into ninth place. Pudge is all the way up from 23rd to 13th. One of the, actually, he is the biggest mover of the race so far. And hey, remember, Patrick Gitter, the top three there, as we've got a car getting waved around. That is Justin Swaffer getting back to the lead lap. Patrick Gitter is in second. He has fresh tires. Eric Ziegel and Kenny Hyde Jr. do not. But as, and it looks like they are going single file, possibly from here for the remainder of the race. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Michael Demoni, or Demoni, you are absolutely right. It looks like the guys that stayed out on old tires... They at least have some heat in the tires. These guys need to practice warming up their tires just a little bit. In fact, you might find a video on the best way to do that on the YouTube channel. You can find all the links for all of that at htsai.net. All right. Eric Ziegel going to lead them down again. Green flag is in the air. And Kenny Hyde Jr. dropping to the bottom already at the line, trying to get the run into turn one. Doesn't have the momentum. Patrick Gitter on those fresher tires is already looking for the lead. And Kenny Hyde's losing spots as fresh tires are beating him up on the high side. Jeremy Gardner up. Jeremy Edwards up top makes his way past. Jeremy Gardner now looking. And a battle for the lead as Patrick Gitter down underneath Eric Ziegel. Drag racing down the back straightaway. Jeremy Edwards on the bottom. He's going to try and go for second here. As they drift back up, Edwards looks down to the bottom, holds it down there. Eric Ziegel's going to have a hard time holding it, but with everybody too wide behind him, he can hold on to this top spot for a while and make this pit strategy work really well for him. Jeremy Gardner now up to fourth. Kenny Hyde Jr. fifth. Chris Lockwood, though, shooting the inside. Almost three wide off of turn two. And Lockwood takes fifth. Kenny Hyde Jr. now battling, trying to hold on. Remember, Kenny on those older tires. Dean Webb has the run on the bottom. Auto Cruise right there. It looks like all the fresh tires might, uh, Kenny Hyde Jr. might get, end up losing quite a few spots on track position. But remember, later in the race, he'll have an extra set of fresh tires. These guys won't. And it'll only take about 20 to 25 green flag laps for the guys that got fresh tires for them to equalize. So the longer Eric can hold on, the longer Kenny can hold on, they might still be in this, but Nate Johnson, power move off turn two. Meanwhile, Patrick Gitter out front, six-tenth of a second lead. Jeremy Edwards in second. Gardner in third. Lockwood in fourth. Dean Webb holding on to fifth, and then just a mess of cars back behind. Dropping back to tenth as Kenny Hyde Jr. continues to drop a little bit of track position. Pudge in 12th, up 11 spots now. So far, the biggest mover, but not the only mover, as Ryan McDaniels, oh, P.J. Cox got a little loose back there. Ryan McDaniels is making his way to the front. He is up 10 spots from 25th to 15th. And remember, he did say uh, during the previous broadcast tonight, he called his shot, said this was his race. Let's take a lap with him and see if we can figure out how he is so fast. 
crossing the start finish line. Off into turn one. Holding that bottom line and staying out of the gas as long as he needs to so he can point and shoot off the turn. Down into turn three, running that uh, middle line. Cuts it back down just a little bit and then drifts it out of four. Following Blair Patterson around, you gotta love the fact that Blair is in a Dodge. Caution! Looks like Blake Vicken and Brandon Newby involved. Oh, looks like the 69 just got right into the 14. Let's see if we can get a slightly different angle. It looks like that 69 Nesquik truck just got into the corner a lot deeper. He was loose off of turn two. And the 14 looked like he might have been a little loose. The 69 had a run. They just get together. And now I fully expect to see some of these drivers that stayed out, like Eric Ziegel and Kenny Hyde Jr., who are currently 9th and 10th, expect to see them on pit road. I don't think Eric's going to try and fake it this time. No, he does not. Uh, hi, Dean. Shouldn't you be driving? <laughs> Brendan Montgomery said Russell is doing good. He's up seven spots from 21st to 14th is Russell Worth. Hey, Dean, this is Doug. You got me? Yeah, I got you, bud. Hey, you know you probably shouldn't be texting and driving. I was that was gonna be my answer when you're like, "What are you doing?" Texting. And <laughs> you missed me last week, so I figured I'd I'd get your attention. <laughs> well, uh, you're definitely uh, definitely interesting. Now I hope you're not texting while you're under green. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> you're up to sixth right now, and uh, you've had a pretty clean race so far. And that truck has looked really racy a couple of different times. Like you just uh, just able to send it wherever you want to. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of doing what it wants, but I need a long run to really figure out where I need to be here with the brake bias and whatnot. Well, man, you're doing great so far. Good luck, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you in victory lane. All right, man. Thanks. Oh, yeah, Dean, I forgot to tell you, put the phone down. Green flag. <laughs> Patrick Gitter down and away. Jeremy Edwards currently in second. Gardner in third. Lockwood in fourth. Single flag. Oh, caution. Blair Patterson involved. It looked like there might have been an issue on some of these guys. Didn't get quite going on the restart. Uh, no, the 66 just gets into the left rear corner panel of Blair Patterson, sends him around right in front of the entire field. As I was mentioning earlier, they are doing manual caution, so normally it'd be uh, a couple of cars or more before the caution would come out. However, given the circumstances and the track, Smart move to throw a caution right uh, right when somebody that's up toward the front spins out right in front of the field because that could be uh, they could go from a single car spin to a entire field killing uh, incident quickly. Dean Webb also snuck up to fifth on that restart. Nate Johnson back to sixth.
All right, cars getting waved around. Lights are out on the pace car, single file restart. Jeremy Edwards still in the lead. Only had uh, the only time he has given up the lead tonight was when he went to pit road for tires on lap 27. Pace car is in. Green flag is in the air. They're down and away. It looks like Ryan McDaniel might have had an issue on the restart. We'll take a look here in just a moment. Oh, cars bouncing off the wall out of tur turn two. That will become a very common theme before too much longer. All right, let's see if we can see what happened to Ryan McDaniel right as they came to green. Uh, it looked like Ryan pulled over. He was getting the e uh, getting an EOL. So nothing major there. Jeremy Edwards has managed to open up a one-second lead, the biggest lead we've seen so far in the race. Jeremy Gardner in second. Otto Cruz is third. Chris Lockwood is fourth. Dean Webb up to fifth now. And Russell Worth, well, let's go first. Pudge is the currently up to eighth after starting in 23rd. So he is the biggest mover so far. Second biggest mover, though, is the Tide Truck, driven by Russell Worth, who started in 21st. He is up to 11th. Then you got guys, like a couple of guys that are sneaking their way through here. Jason Miz started in 27th. He is in 14th and looking to pick up some more. Eric Ziegel, who led earlier by tire or by pit strategy, staying out for track position. He it started in 29th and is back up into 15. Oh, he's around. He gets hit and turned. Let's see what happened there. Oh, that was Ryan McDaniel coming off pit road. Let's see what happened to Eric. And it looks like the 38 just thought he had more room. Gets down into Eric. Eric was on a charge towards the front. And we're seeing a smattering of cars go to pit road. Auto Cruise and Dean Webb both on pit road. Still have 23 cars on the lead lap. And I do believe Brandon Newby is in position to get to a wave around. Patrick Piper also on pit road. So it's still Edwards in the lead. Jeremy Gardner in second. Chris Lockwood in third. Kevin Bernheimer fourth. Nate Johnson is fifth. Pudge, due to... Uh, the pit stops is now in sixth. Brian DeYoung seventh. PJ Cox eighth. Anthony Karen is ninth. And look at this. Russell Worth has made his way into the top ten. Jason Miz, who started in 27th, is up to 11th now. Eric Ziegel, despite that spin, still in 14th. And Kenny Hyde Jr. right in front of him. Those are the two trucks. Kenny Hyde and Eric Ziegel, those are the two trucks that stayed out when everybody else went to pit road on lap 27. They stayed out, got the track position, they pitted later, they've got fresher tires than everybody in front of them. And it looks like several different tire strategies are starting to form here.
Jeremy Edwards on that last restart got the biggest lead that we have seen tonight, just over one second. Lights are out on the pace car. Looks like they are going single file again. This race is looking like it might come down to a question of what pit strategy, what tire strategy works out best. I can tell you fuel strategy, not really an issue here. These guys can go uh, 98, roughly 95 to 98 laps on a tank of fuel. So once they hit lap 102 to 105, they can go the distance. As the pace car drops in, Green flag is in the air. Jeremy gets another great restart and opens up a gap on Gardner. And Kevin Bernheimer now up to fourth place. Haven't even talked about him much tonight, but here he is making his way up into the to fourth place. He's got Nate Johnson right behind him. And Pudge now up into sixth. Bryant DeYoung up to seventh. P.J. Cox now up to eighth. Anthony Karen is ninth. Russell Worth is tenth. Jason Miz loses a couple of spots on the restart, but he is fighting back now. And remember, Eric Ziegel and Kenny Hyde Jr., different tire strategy than pretty much everybody in front of them. Jeremy Edwards has opened up a half a second lead over Gardner. Lockwood in third. And Pudge looking down to the inside of Bernheimer through one and two. Meanwhile, there is a lot of side-by-side -side battling going on back here as Kenny Hyde Jr. and Eric Ziegel trying to work together towards the front. They've got Jason Miz up on the high side. And Blair Patterson, after that incident earlier, trying to work his way back toward the front. And it looks like a lot of guys have not used their repair yet. Trying to make the cars last on this short track, Arrow, not as big of an issue. They do get some decent speeds down the straightaway, but uh, Arrow, not as important here as it would be at, say, Talladega or Texas or Atlanta, somewhere like that. So these guys can drive with that damage and have minimal impact to the car. The top three are starting to pull away. There's a one second gap between third place Chris Lockwood, fourth place Nate Johnson. The field really starting to stretch out now. Bear in mind, a lap here is 22 and a half seconds roughly. And Brandon Newby, who is the last car on the lead lap, is currently four toe, is currently 14 seconds behind the leader. So lap traffic will become an issue very, very quickly if this stays green. And don't forget to check out the uh, sponsors for tonight, or for the league, Fat Boys Diecast, The Uprooted Maker, and Into Being. Go support all of them. Anything you can do with them, please do. Any, any league sponsors you ever see, please help support those companies, those groups. That is what helps keep leagues like this going. That's what helps support them, and we greatly appreciate all of those. Caution, Russell Worth involved, Blair Patterson. Oh, Russell gets hit the 95, I believe that was, and Blair really takes a hit on that one. 
Look like uh, the 95, I believe it was, just pushed up in the middle of the corner. Yeah, that was the 95 that pushed up in the middle of the corner. Trying to get back on the gas. Russell was trying to drop down to a little bit lower line. They met in the middle, and Blair happened to use the uh, back of the truck as a ramp. Looks like Jason Miz might have been caught up in a little bit of this as we see all the lead lap cars. Uh, that That's Jason Miz in the 95, excuse me. And he will get an EOL. Now, most of the lead lap cars are on pay road. Swafford stays out. Karen stays out. Anthony Karen. Auto Cruz staying out. Kenny Hyde Jr. and Eric Ziegel, they're going to both stay out. They're on that different strategy. Patrick Gitter, Dean Webb. Patrick Piper all stay out. Everybody else is on pit road. Hey, Kenny, this is Doug. You got me? Yes, sir. Hey, I have to ask, man, you and uh, Eric are on a almost completely different pit strategy than everybody else, but... On that last run, you guys were really marching through the field. With half the field going to pit road right now, are you still feeling good about this strategy? Yeah. Um, hopefully with the gap that we have between the guys that just pit now and the guys that have chose to stay out, it should help us out. A little bit of a cushion to get these guys to start burning their stuff up a little bit. and Hopefully on the next cycle we can all pit together and have the track position to stay up front. Uh, your strategies have worked really well so far. It's kept you up there in contention, man. Good luck. I hope it works. Thanks. Uh, hopefully we can stay clear of the wrecks once with the, everything cycles back and we got to work our way back up through the field with the tires that we choose to get them. All right, man. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. Oh, Robbie, you're right. We do not have our bunk guy. Ramp bonk was good. I like that. I, I had completely forgotten about the bonk. I actually made a note of it last week and I forgot to look at... Excuse me, I forgot to look at my uh, notes earlier. Ramp bonk is perfect. Alright, everybody stacking back up for the restart. It will be single file again. Looks like they might be going single file for the remainder of the event. Eighty-one laps in the book, just over or right at one hundred and nineteen to go. And look at this: Justin Swafford is pushing the pace car. Justin, if you're still listening, drive into the pace car. There you go. Justin makes the truck disappear in the pace car. I love it when these guys do that. That is one of the coolest things. Although I've always said it would be a hilarious joke if one uh, week 13 iRacing made the pace car solid. I think that would be the funniest. People driving into the pace car and all of a sudden they get wrecked. <laughs> all right, pace car is in. Green flag is in the air. Everybody's away. This is the most treacherous time. We've got a bunch of guys on fresh tires that'll be cold. The guys up at the front have some heat in them and we'll be able to use that to your there. Oh, the 17 of Jeremy Edwards is around. Jeremy just getting loose off of turn two. Usually, as I mentioned earlier, usually uh, he does a great job saving it. Usually the problem with the truck is a push off of turn two, but uh, when iRacing did their last updates, as they continue to make it as realistic as possible, as close to the real thing, uh, obviously the changes in the tire and the changes in suspension and whatnot has... Uh, and adjusting these fixed setups 
makes it loose off two. Normally at Richmond, when you see these guys running, when they start driving off turn four on cold tires, that's when you see guys really start to have some problems. Turn four used to be the, you used to see a lot of guys just go plowing through the grass off turn four. Not seen it yet tonight. And no bonk. Eric Ziegel's strategy and Kenny Hyde Jr. strategy working really well. Kenny Hyde Jr. in fourth, Eric Ziegel in fifth. And the 14 is coming back around. Brandon Newby will be back on the lead lap. After that round of pit stops, Swafford is in the lead, Anthony Karen in second, Otto Cruz is third, Kenny Hyde Jr. is fourth, Eric Ziegel is fifth, then Patrick Gitter, Dean Webb, Patrick Piper, uh, Jeremy Gardner, Chris Lockwood round out the top ten, Nate Johnson in 11th, Kevin Bernheimer in 12th, Pudge is currently running in 13th, Brian DeYoung is 14th, PJ Cox is 15th, then Jeffrey Sheldon, Blair Patterson, Jarrett Woodard, Russell Worth, James Smith round out the top 20. Bradley Hunt, Jeremy Edwards, and Brandon Newby are the last three cars on the lead lap. All right, pace car is in. Green flag is back in the air. Swafford is away and leads the field down. It looks like at some point towards the back of the field, somebody struggled to get going because there was a gap coming down the front straightaway. Swafford, meanwhile, taking advantage. He is pulling away. There's a battle for second as Otto Cruz drops to the bottom and goes for second place. And it looks like Kenny Hyde Jr. is going to try and follow him through. And... Anthony Karen stuck up on the high side for the moment. Eric Ziegel looking to the bottom in turn one. Patrick Gitter in sixth. Dean Webb seventh. Jeremy Gardner eighth. Chris Lockwood ninth. And Patrick Piper in tenth. And wow. Justin was way wide off turn four. Almost getting the wall. He was pushing that car for everything he's got. Because Otto Cruz is four tenths of a second back. He is coming. His tires are 12 laps fresher than uh, Swafford's. Eric Ziegel, Patrick Gitter battling. Dean Webb right there with him. And Gardner now dropping to the bottom to find a run under Dean Webb. Can't complete it yet. Now, Dean's going to try and drop low. Couldn't get there, though. It is getting a little bit dicey mid-pack. This is a battle for about 6th, 7th, and 8th place as Eric Ziegel up on the high side currently in 6th. But Dean Webb, it, Jeremy Gardner trying to change that. Gardner's going to take 6. Can Dean get by? Oh, there might have been a little bit of a tap there. They rub doors. They're going to go. Eric Ziegel in the wall. Looking to see Eric Ziegel after smacking the wall out of four has drifted back to 16th. He's still up. Started in 29th, so he is still up 13 spots, but obviously he was having one heck of a run. Pudge currently running up in ninth place. Anthony Karen also working his way forward. And Otto Cruz has taken the lead. Remember, he had fresher tires and just managed to go flying by. Swafford in second. Now there's a battle on for third as Patrick Gitter trying to get past Kenny Hyde Jr.
And Kenny Hyde just drifting up to the top side, trying to hold, get her off. He's got him for the moment. Car up high in three and four. Looks like a lap car. That is Nicholas Burke. He is the first car one lap down, currently in 24th. Auto Cruz still maintaining the lead as we approach halfway. Swafford staying with him, but there's a couple of guys that are starting to make their way back up toward the front. Guys like Patrick Gitter. And Pudge is up to seventh now. And look at this, Gitter and Hyde continuing to battle side by side. Jeremy Gardner trying to give uh, Gitter a little bit of help down there on the bottom. And look at, oh, they're going to try and make a three wide off turn two. Chris Lockwood really just sent it down in there. He's going to slip my Gardner now. Looked like Lockwood was thinking about trying to make it even four wide as he came off two with one heck of a run. And while Gitter and Hyde continue to battle, Lockwood just marching forward. All right, just past halfway, put your prediction in the comments. Let us know who you think is going to win this one. It's halfway, why not? That way, whenever we guess, it'll probably be wrong by the time it's over. Lockwood keeps, oh, caution! Nicholas Burke, we saw him trying to hold the lead lap and then let the leaders by. He's up high in three and four. And, oh, is that uh, Jerry? could not tell who that was but hard hit into the outside wall and it looks like the uh, that was a 55 it looks like he just got a bit of a push coming up off the turn oh that was Ziegle all right and we've got the whole crew coming to pit road. All the lead lap cars hitting pit road. Looks like Nate Johnson wins the battle. Jeffrey Sheldon's going to be in second. James Smith in third. The er, James Smith in third. Russell Worth in fourth. And those four have not pit since lap 79. So another set of tire strategy going on here. Looking to see, I believe Bradley Hunt in the 69 got waved around. He is still in the lead, or he gets the tail end of the lead lap in 23rd. So the top four is going to be Nate Johnson, uh, Jeffrey Sheldon, James Smith, and Russell Worth all staying out. Then on fresh tires, Otto Cruz, Justin Swafford, Patrick Gitter, Kenny Hyde Jr., Chris Lockwood, and Pudge 
rounding out your top ten. Jeremy Gardner, Kevin Bernheimer, Bryant DeYoung, and Anthony Karen and P.J. Cox, 11th through 15th. Jeremy Edwards, 16th. Eric Ziegel, 17th. Blair Patterson, 18th. Uh, Jarrett Woodard, 19th. Dean Webb in 20th. Brandon Newby, Patrick Piper, and Bradley Hunt rounding out the cars on the lead lap. Lights are out on the pace car. And Nate Johnson leading for the first time tonight as they come to green. Pace car in, Nate is down and away, green is in the air. And already got some guys, I believe it's Patrick Gitter diving down to the inside into turn one. Gitter moving forward and a Russell Worth starting to mount three wide off turn four. Russell Worth in the middle, it's caution, is out behind him. Looks like Jeremy Edwards involved in this one. Oh, Eric Ziegel down underneath, and they just get together, coming out of turn four. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Nate Johnson comes. Uh, Nate Johnson stays out, but Jeffrey Sheldon, Russell Worth, James Smith, and Dean Webb all come to pay road. Everybody lining back up. Ryan McDaniel getting waved back to the lead lap. Lights are out on the pace car. Nate Johnson, Otto Cruz, Patrick Gitter, Justin Swafford, and Kenny Hyde Jr. have the top five for the restart. Pace car drops in. Nate controlling the restart here. Green flag is in the air. Nate doesn't jump as early this time, trying to mix it up and give these guys, keep them guessing. Patrick Gitter already diving down to the inside and caution back out. Bradley Hunt involved. Bradley Hunt's had a rough night in that 69 car. Oh, just gets loose mid-pack. Looked like he managed to save it, but I... I'm betting he spun the tires. I'm betting he has not been to pit road in a while. Let's take a quick look. No, he stopped on 103, so probably just no heat in the tires.
Nate Johnson still has the lead. Otto Cruz in set second. Patrick Gitter third. Justin Swafford fourth. Kenny Hyde Jr. in fifth. Chris Lockwood in sixth. Matt uh, Pudjanowski in seventh. Eighth is Jeremy Gardner. Kevin Bernheimer is ninth. Brian DeYoung is tenth. Anthony Karen, PJ Cox, Blair Patterson, Brandon Newby, and Patrick Piper round out the top 15 as they get ready to go green. And Nate gets a good jump on him this time. Green flag in the air. Everybody makes it through this time. It looks like we've got a big battle in the back. Jeremy Edwards trying to make something happen. He is all the way back in 22nd. Start, restarted in 23rd, but already starting to make his way back towards the front. And battle for the lead. Not much of a battle. Otto Cruz just drives right by Nate Johnson on the high side. 20 lap fresher tires. That is the difference right there as Otto Cruz just monsters by him and continues to pull away. Nate Johnson trying to hold that bottom line, force everybody to pass him on the high side and hold these guys off as long as possible. He needs this to stay green for at least 20 to 30 more laps for everybody to equalize, but he's got to try and keep as much track position as possible. Currently back into fourth. Nate Johnson doing his best to hold on, but man, these guys, 20 lap fresher tires, they are just flying by. Meanwhile, Otto Cruz out front now has Patrick Gitter, who has been working his way steadily back towards the front. He started in second, but on pit strategy, he ended up outside the top 10 for a while. Has made his way back up to seventh and continue or to second, excuse me, continuing to march his way forward. Justin Swafford up in third. Kenny Hyde Jr. in fourth. He's on that different tire strategy, but it looks like uh, what he talked about when we interviewed him. He waited until a long green flag run, and now he's on the same tire strategy as everybody else. Chris Lockwood in fifth. Pudge up to sixth now and continuing his march forward. Jeremy Gardner in seventh. Nate Johnson in eighth. Brian DeYoung in ninth. And Kevin Bernheimer up to tenth. And there is battles going on all over the track right now. Russell Worth, one of the guys that was marching through the field earlier, back in 20th with Eric Ziegel back behind him. Jeremy Edwards, another one that was flying earlier, but is now back in 18th. We'll have to see if he can make... Oh! Got a car that hit the wall off of turn two. That's the 38. That is Patrick Piper hits the wall out of turn two. Saw a lot of that last night. Guys have to be ready to get really low if the other driver hits the wall out of two, they just stop. Otto Cruz still holding on to the lead half of a second right now. Patrick Gitter in second, Swafford in third. Blair Patterson, massive accident earlier, and actually two incidents in a row. One where he could not avoid it. One he got tapped into the outside wall in turn two. And then another one where a car sideways right in front of him, he drove over it and had a ramp bonk, but uh, has fought his way back into the top 10. He is currently in ninth.
And Otto Cruz no longer has a gap on Patrick Gitter. It seems like Gitter comes on strong. Obviously, after Rockingham last week, we know he is one of the best at tire saving. Justin Swafford still up in third. Justin's been on different tire strategy off and on throughout the night. Holy cow! Otto Cruz was way high off of turn four, and now Patrick Gitter's got to run down to the bottom. They drag race down the back straightaway for the lead. Caution is out right in front of the leaders. Bradley Wright went around. He was a little loose off two, it looked like. Down into turn three. I don't... He just got into an other truck. Just looked like he missed his braking point. But here comes the entire field. Wow. Trying to see who the other truck was. Is you saw him just drop to the bottom. The 99... Nothing the 99 could do there. That was Joe Ogle in the 99 that comes to Pitt Road. As we see a lot of the leaders back on Pitt Road, Justin Swafford, Kenny Hyde Jr. staying out. Kevin Bernheimer staying out. Nate Johnson, PJ Cox staying out. Hey, Kevin, it's Doug. You got me? Yes, sir. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm good. Uh, looks like you've had a pretty consistent night, but playing a little uh, strategy here to pick up some track position? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think. I just uh, stayed out. We only got two sets left, so hopefully uh, I didn't want one now and one in 35. Hopefully I can hold off a little bit, maybe get one here in 20 and another in 20 or something like that. Well, it seems like uh, staying out tonight has really paid off for a lot of guys trying to stretch that. And if you can just hold on to it, it seems like uh, it pays off really well. Yeah, we've been getting uh, too many cautions, so it helps you stay up there. And uh, you're not getting that many laps on your tires under green. So we'll uh, give her a shot here, see what we can do. All right, buddy. Good luck, man. All right, man. Thank you. All right, Kevin Bernheimer taking some strategy up to puts him up into third. He's been in the top 10 most of the night, but now he'll be right up there at the front. Have a shot at guys like Swafford and Kenny Hyde Jr. Nate Johnson stayed out as well, but while the top three pitted on lap 103, Nate, I am showing, has not pitted since lap 79. Unless the scoring has just gone wonky, he's been out there longer than everybody. And it seems to be working for him. He might actually have some uh, tires set back in reserve. And if we get several late race cautions, that could give him a distinct advantage. All right, as they get ready to come to green, Justin Swafford, Kenny Hyde Jr., Kevin Bernheimer, Nate Johnson, and for the first time tonight, P.J. Cox now in the top ten. That is your top five as they get ready to go green. And it looks like Swafford's going to start from the low line, even though it's single file. Not sure what that strategy is about. He left the high side wide open, but there he goes. Kenny Hyde Jr., though, already got the nose in up top and looking for the lead here. Can't quite get it, but he might be going for that crossover move down the back straightaway. Not yet. And P.J. Cox, strategy and being fast. He's been outside the top 10 most of the night, but just barely. Been in 11th, 12th, and 13th most of the night. He's made his way to 5th now. Now remember these guys that came to pit road their lap their tires are only 20 laps newer and given some of the caution 
Auto Cruz. And looks like James Smith involved. Auto was up leading just a few minutes ago. It looks like there was a little banging right in front of him. Auto tried to get on the brakes too hard, and it looks like what we talked about earlier might have had that brake bias too far back because once you get on the brakes hard and the brake bias too far back, it just sends the car around. And James Smith uh, on the receiving end of that bonk. Yeah, Otto was just drifting it through the turn. Almost had it saved. I don't think that would have happened if James hadn't been up there. Oh, look at that. Justin Swafford fakes to pit road. Kenny Hyde Jr., Kevin Bernheimer, Nate Johnson, PJ Cox, Eric Ziegel all come to pit road. And would you look at this. Now, Swafford up front, Brandon Newby in second. And look who's back up here in the top three, Jeremy Edwards. He was back around 21st just a few laps ago. Chris Lockwood in fourth, Patrick Gitter in fifth, Pudge in sixth, Jeffrey Sheldon, another driver that we haven't really talked about tonight, but here he is in seventh after starting in 18th. He has been steadily working his way forward one or two spots at a time, a little bit of strategy, a little bit of speed. He has made it into the top 10. Jeremy Gardner in eighth, Blair Patterson in ninth, and Russell Worth in 10th. Russell Worth really having an up and down kind of night. Hey, Jeremy, this is Doug in the booth. You got me? Yes, sir. Hey, uh, you've really had an up and down kind of night, but you're, uh, you've been really fast when you're out front. Are you going to be able to get out front and hold them off? Uh, we'll see. Made a mistake there myself and fired off two, and then uh, the 55 got into me going into three for the second time. So <clears throat> we'll see. I only got one set of tires left. I uh, already had to use my quick repair, so I'm going to know I got Patrick and uh, Lockwood behind me on fresh tires, so we'll see how long I can hold them off. Uh, playing it safe might be the wise move until it comes down to the end. Good luck, and yep. you definitely have a fast ride tonight, man. We've seen you cutting through traffic, so good luck, buddy. That's good. <laughs> Pudge, don't worry about it, man. This has been some really good racing. And it tends to be when you have racing this good, guys, this close to each other speed-wise and everybody being this fast, this kind of thing uh, is going to happen. It's just short track racing, baby. I don't remember how, I, what is it? Uh, I, I don't remember the... All right, lights are out on the pace car. Swafford and Edwards up front, then Lockwood, Gitter, and Pudge in the top five. Jeffrey Sheldon, Jeremy Gardner, Blair Patterson, Bryant DeYoung, and Dean Webb rounding out the top ten. Dean, another driver who's had an up and down kind of night, looking to make a comeback here. Pace car about to drop off. Just oh, right at 60 laps left to go. Pace car is in. Swafford leads them down. Green flag in the air. Top two on older tires. A lot of the field behind them on fresh tires. And some guys starting to make something happen. Blair Patterson finally gets that car repaired. Jeremy Gardner making something happen as well. We've seen him make that bottom line work better than anybody uh, a lot tonight. Otto Cruz involved in an incident. No caution. Let's see what happened.
Auto hard, hard, hard on the brakes, but drifts it, saves it. Loses some track position, but manages to keep it green. Swafford and Edwards, uh, while they're battling, Chris Lockwood is battling Patrick Gitter here. Lockwood holding on to third. But I don't think Patrick Gitter is done with them yet. And looky here, Pudzianowski on the back bumper in fifth. <laughs> oh, Arthur. Yes, sir. See, I'm not very, I, I'm nowhere close to what, uh, what the way Pudge does it. I end up sounding like a demented uh, Al Pacino or something. And meanwhile, Chris Lockwood now diving to the inside of Edwards for second place. Remember, Edwards and Swafford on older tires. And it looks like Edwards might have caught the wall off of turn two. A bunch of cars come flying by him now. Gitter gets clear, Hughes is clear, and Gardner is going to clear him into turn one. Lockwood has been extremely fast tonight. We've seen him make some very, very bold moves out there, but he makes them work. Somehow he makes that truck stick where 99% of the world just couldn't and now he is down on the bottom going for the lead here Swafford trying to fight back on the high side but those fresher tires just getting the job done Patrick Gitter in gonna come for second Pudge is now in third and Gardner, who's been making his way forward most of the night, is in fifth, looking for fourth here. Ricky Burton, that's probably the truest statement I have ever heard. They are racing exactly how Richmond is supposed to be raced. Hard, nonstop, fast, and that's going to bring out some cautions, but... Uh, it makes for some awesome race and they're side by side everywhere on track including Lockwood and Gitter going for the lead. Lockwood led last time by but Gitter's got the nose in. Oh they both drift up it gets a little close off of turn four both of them managed to hold on to it. Lockwood's got a run but Gitter's got a nose ahead Drag race down the back straight. Meanwhile, Pudge is having to battle Jeremy Gardner. Side by side for third. Side by side for first and second. Side by side. Oh! I think they might have just barely touched there in the middle of one and two. Gardner clearing Pudge there as well in one and two. Lockwood clears Gitter. Wow, what? So, that was a ton of close racing. Blair Patterson, meanwhile, has made his way back up into fifth place after two very hard bonks. Dean Webb in sixth. Justin Swafford is seventh. Kenny Hyde Jr. eighth. Bryant DeYoung ninth. And Jeremy Edwards had some struggles early on. He is on older tires, but holding on to a top 10 position right now as he battles with Bryant DeYoung. That is for 9th and 10th. And look who's behind him. Eric Ziegel has come back to the front. Edwards slips back to 11th. Eric back in the top 10. And Lockwood starting to open up a small gap 
on Patrick Gitter. But don't count Gitter out. As we saw last week at Rockingham, that man knows how to save some tires. And we saw earlier in the race on old tires, he started marching forward. Jeremy Gardner, though, all over that back bumper as well. And it looks like Blair Patterson is actually closing the gap. Meanwhile, there's a battle back behind Dean Webb and Kenny Hyde Jr. battling for sixth. Kenny Hyde Jr. down to the bottom. Still fighting side by side. It's so hard to pass here at times. And the longer you're out, the older the tires, the harder it gets to do it. Brian DeYoung in ninth and Eric Ziegel in tenth. Eric Ziegel on seven lap fresher tires than Bryant. That might come into play, not by much. That seven laps really doesn't seem like much, but uh, it could have an impact. Jeremy Edwards looks like uh, he is holding on to 11th right now, despite the older tires. And remember, he's only got one set left, so if a caution comes out or an opportunity presents itself, he'll go to pit road, and he will be in really good shape. P.J. Cox in 12th. He has been in the top. He's been in between 10th and 13th most of the night. Popped up into the top five for a little bit. Now back into 12th. Jarrett Woodard currently running in 13th. Nate Johnson has drifted back to 14th. Anthony Karen currently running in 15th. That truck's got a lot of damage. Kevin Bernheimer in 16th. Russell Worth currently in 17th. And Otto Cruz in 18th, but looking for 17th from Russell right now. And Jeremy Edwards is on pit road. Jeffrey Sheldon 19th, Bradley Hunt in 20th. So this will be the final stop for Edwards. He's got to hope that the caution does not come. Caution is out. This can either be perfect timing for Jeremy Edwards or it might have just ended his race. I have to wait a lap or two to find out. Let's see what happened. Jeffrey Sheldon... Talked about in pre... Oh, they just come together. It looks like... Sheldon didn't know the 69 had a nose in. Now, I mentioned it a little bit ago. Lockwood, he has made some moves that a lot of people wouldn't even consider trying, and he's made them work. Is he faking? No, he's going to come to pit road. And it looks like everybody's going to be on pit road. Jeremy Edwards will come off if he gets off of pit road very quickly he might no oh, he is he ended up losing two laps on that exchange Bernheimer stayed out. James Smith stays out. Patrick Piper stays out. Everybody behind them coming has come to Pitt Road. So Bernheimer in the lead for the first time tonight. James Smith in second. Patrick Gitter in third. Chris Lockwood will restart in fourth with four fresh tires. And 35 or just under 35 laps to go. And Lockwood has been able to do 
things with that truck that uh, nobody else could. Lights are out on the pace car. Bernheimer's going to lead him down. He last pitted on 136. James Smith last pitted on 136. Everybody else behind them has pitted under, under caution this time. Pace car is in. Bernheimer's away. Green is in the air. James Smith up on the high side as look here comes Jeremy Gardner again Lockwood up to third now and running down the leader meanwhile Patrick Gitter dives down to the inside for first place on Bernheimer and it looks like Lockwood's going to follow him through Bernheimer, slipping back to fourth, and here comes Gardner. Patrick Gitter, though, has managed to open up a bit of a gap, seven-tenths of a second, over Chris Lockwood. Not actually seen Lockwood in clean air all night tonight. He has just been monstering through the pack every time we've seen him. Now that he doesn't have a bunch of cars to weave around, he's going to have to run Patrick Gitter down. But Patrick Gitter just ran the fastest lap of the race on lap 170. And now Jeremy Gardner to the bottom for second. Gardner really sent it off of turn four gets a huge run down the front stretch Lockwood back to third and Pudge is now up to fourth as Blair Patterson makes his way up to fifth Bernheimer has slipped all the way back to 12th And Blair Patterson having an up and down kind of night has had a great recovery in that Mopar 91. And Patrick Gitter, man, he wants he check got to the lead. He is starting to check out caution. Brandon Newby involved. Coming off of turn two, just loses it, drifts it down the back straight away into the inside wall. And that's going to tighten things back up. See if we can get a word with our leader here. Hey, Patrick, this is Doug. You got me? 10 4. Got you, Doug. Hey, I, I have to ask, did you realize you just ran the fastest lap of the race on 170? Dude, I had no clue, man. <laughs> uh, I think that's got a lot to do with uh, Chris Lockwood being behind me, though, man. He's been running fast all night. I've been kind of keeping my eye on my mirror. Yeah, he definitely has, but uh, it looks like when it comes down to not having to navigate through uh, a bunch of traffic, because that's where he seems to excel, but once you guys have some clean air, you're just gone. Man, I'm just going to have to keep it up. I, uh, I'm i starting to think about the long run speed that's coming up. we got 25 laps left, and these tires run fast. They wear quick. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the 25 laps uh, look like and you know what lines guys start to run. I know a lot of guys, they've used up their last set of tires. So I think that's going to be something to keep an eye on here. 
It definitely could be. I know quite a few of them have used up their last set, so it's uh, it might come down to a little bit of attrition and, and saving the tires. And after Rockingham last week, man, it seems like you're uh, exceedingly good at saving the tires. Yeah, we'll see, man. It's just, I mean, it's all about the, these tracks like this. It's all about letting the car just kind of roll in, and that's something I've just you know had to had to get used to here since i've been on the platform so we'll we'll see how it goes i've got some fast guys behind me jeremy chris pudge um so it's gonna be a battle here at the end all right man good luck buddy yep 10-4 appreciate it <laughs> rough night for ryan mcdaniel <laughs> It has been a good race, but a rough one for a lot of drivers. All right, lights are out on the pace car. Patrick Gitter has the lead. Pace car is in, and green flag is back in the air. As the entire field comes flying back by, Patrick Gitter trying to jump out to an early lead. Gardner in second, Lockwood in third, Pudge is in fourth, Blair Patterson in fifth, and look at this, Eric Ziegel, Kenny Hyde Jr. been on the same basic tire strategy all night. It looks like late in the race, it is definitely paying off. They are Kenny Hyde Jr. in 6th, Eric Ziegel in 7th. Dean Webb currently in 8th, Ninth is Justin Swafford, Bryant DeYoung in 10th. Patrick Gitter is still up front, but there is a big battle going on back here. Blair Patterson now has made his way up to fourth. Pudge up on the high side, currently in fifth. And here comes Kenny Hyde Jr. He wants that fifth place spot. Patrick Gitter is loving seeing this battling behind him in his mirror. Hey, thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, you are right. Uh, Jeremy Edwards is back to the lead lap and starting to make his way forward. He's up to 15th now. He's picked up uh, roughly six spots since the caution. He also stopped on that caution, and it's definitely the fresh tire is definitely working. He just needs enough time. Will 20 laps be enough? Patrick Gitter's lead starting to shrink just a little bit. Jeremy Gardner starting to come clo clo closing in. Excuse me. Chris Lockwood in third. Blair Patterson fourth. And Kenny Hyde Jr. in fifth. Caution. And I did not see uh, any. There was a battle going on between. Out oh, there we have it. Eric Ziegel gets the bump and run. And oh, several cars get caught up in that one. Let's see if we can get a better view of that. Watch Eric Ziegel here. Oh, wait a minute. It helped to be on the right one. And he just gets the, the 09 gives him a little bump, and then he collects the 28. PJ Cox gets a piece of it. A lot of very close calls. You got to give it to Eric. He really saved the car from that being a much worse fate. 
and from getting into several other guys he was on the brakes and managing to hold that car at least in one lane Brandon, it was a rough night for a lot of you guys, but man, come back strong next week, buddy. So Patrick Gitter has maintained the lead. He's going to get one more shot at the restart, hoping he can hold that lead. And it looks like we're going to stack up for a double file restart. First time we've seen a double file in a while. So things could get very interesting here very quickly. This might be Jeremy Gardner's only chance. Plus you got Chris Lockwood. Hayes car is in. Green flag is in the air. It'll be 14 to go at the line, and Patrick gets a run off. And they're going to try and make it three wide. Kenny Hyde Jr. sent it up the middle. Caution is out back behind. Patrick Piper and James Smith involved. And looks, oh, the 23 just gets, the 38 was trying to change down a lane. The 23 get a little push up the wall, and it collected James Smith. James, another one who has had just rotten luck tonight. He's been yeeted several times. Yep, Brandon, we'll see you. Uh, it was fun last night. Patrick Gitter, I'm sure, is not loving these restarts because he gets a gap and then they close in on him. Hey, Jeremy, this is Doug in the booth. You got me? Jeremy Gardner, this is Doug in the booth. You got me? Oh, what's up? <laughs> Just as soon as I was putting him back, he finally keyed up. My apologies, Jeremy. We'll get with you. It looks like we're going to be talking to you after the race. All right, back to the single file restart. Pace car about to drop in. Gitter gets another shot. He's going to try and run away. Already on the move. Green flag in the air. Off into turn one for Patrick Gitter. Blair Patterson now up to third. Lockwood back to fourth. Kenny Hyde Jr. in fifth. Pudge has drifted back to seventh. Just trying to hold on to a top ten right now. Patrick Gitter really sends it off of four. Nine laps to go. And 
Patterson, what a comeback story for Blair Patterson. He has been got bumped into turn number two, backed it into the wall, been caught in a, had damage from a previous incident when that happened, then got to use another driver as a ramp when he had nowhere to go, coming off turn four and a car spun in front of him and has come back to third place. Can he get up here and do anything with the top two? Chris Lockwood has navigated in and out of traffic all night. He's in fourth. Kenny Hyde Jr., different tire strategy throughout the night, in fifth. Dean Webb just consistently works his way back forward up to sixth now. Pudge, biggest mover of the night, started in 23rd. He is up to seventh. Bryant DeYoung has come back from a lot tonight. I think every incident on track, he's at least caught a small piece of it. He's up to 8th, Swafford in ninth, and Bernheimer in 10th. But Patrick Gitter is going to come down. His crew chief is going to tell him five laps to go. He's got a 7 tenth of a second lead over Gardner. Blair Patterson in third. Trying to hold on. Looked like he had something for Gardner a minute ago. This might not be over. Kenny Hyde Jr. has made his way up to fourth. Lockwood now back into fifth. And here comes Dean Webb. Back behind him, Bryant DeYoung and Justin Swafford battling for eighth place. Patrick Gitter really slinging it off of turn four. Looks like he's going to get the wall every time. Let's ride around. Hopefully he'll sling it off turn four again. Watch his end car and watch off of turn two. You see a little wiggle. The truck's still a little bit loose. But watch this off of turn four. Almost seems like he's going to go up there and hit the wall. He is so close. Chris Lockwood is on pit road. Two laps to go for Patrick Gitter. He gets the white flag this time. Six tenths of a second over Gardner right now. He just has to maintain it. Blair Patterson, what a comeback to come home third. But Kenny Hyde Jr. is not done. He's still got two more corners to go. Out of turn four. Patrick Gitter gets the win two weeks in a row. Jeremy Gardner in second. Blair Patterson finishes third. Let's see if we can get a word with Blair. Actually, I don't see Blair available. Hopefully, I'll hop in. Let's get all the Jeremy Gardner. Hey, Jeremy, this is Doug in the booth. You got me? What's up, buddy? Hey, man. Uh, great run tonight. It looked like you might have had a shot there for a second at Patrick. Yeah, I used my stop pop. It just wouldn't turn. I was over breaking. Just, just couldn't make it happen. Well, regardless, man, you had one heck of a run tonight up in the top 10 most of the night. Uh, just a pretty clean, safe race for the most part. Yeah, I try to be conservative. You know how the restarts are. It's, it's hectic, but I made it through it, thankfully. <laughs> you definitely did, man. A great run. Congratulations, buddy. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, let's see if we can talk to our winner. Hey, Patrick, it's Doug. You got me? 10-4, gotcha. 
two weeks in a row, man. That's got to be a good feeling to start the season. Yeah, I don't know how all that worked out, man. It was that first week in Daytona that got me. Um, so it's been nice to start, you know, on a little different outcome here, second and third race. But, man, those guys at the end there, they were fast. I was watching Jeremy Gardner in my mirror the whole time. He, I think we were running about the same laps a lot of times there at the end. Um, but, you know, it was fun. Richmond's a fun track, uh, short track racing. Um, you know, it's just <laughs> never know what to expect. That, that is definitely true. You managed to keep the truck. The only, I think, one time you got back in the pack, you just came flying back through. It seemed like you were picking up five and ten cars a sing, every single lap until you got back up in the top five and nobody could touch you. Yeah, I just, you know, I just got lucky on the tire strategy. I didn't know how it was going to play out. I, I think I was one of the only cars that came kind of early on, like, 40 or 50 or something like that. And, um I don't know. I just kind of rolled the dice on it coming early like that, and it worked out at the end. Well, congratulations, man. The first two-time winner this season in uh, pretty good fashion tonight. Yeah, thank you. I'll just, uh, just want to throw a shout-out to our sponsor tonight. I think it's Silver Fox Racing tonight. Um, thank you guys for uh, sponsoring the race. I um, just want to say thank you to iNation, Nowski Nation, Nowski Motorsports. I mean, we just got such a great group of guys here that are running together. Um, I'm just excited we're able to put this on on Wednesday nights. Um, just looking forward to the season ahead. All right, man. Congrats, buddy. Yep. Appreciate it, Doug. Thank you. And unfortunately, I don't see Blair available, but man, what a comeback for uh, Blair Patterson tonight. A rough start. The first half of the race, nothing but problems, but the second half of the race just started marching his way forward. A great race out of everybody, and uh, what, what an awesome, awesome battle tonight from Richmond. Thank you guys so much. For tuning in I hope you guys had as much fun as we did don't forget you can tune in almost every night and see some great racing right here don't forget to check out the website htsai.net don't forget to go check out Nowski Vision on Facebook and Pudjanowski on Twitch and everybody have a great night